So for the last few months, I've been talking about finishing the quarry tile path that goes up towards the Cloister Pergola. Finally, this weekend, I've had the time to do it and it's now complete. So to start with, that was just a mud path that was edged on both sides with some railway sleepers, as you can see from this picture here. And I'd long decided that I wanted this to be a very interesting path. So I reclaimed these quarry tiles and then set about putting them in. So I started yesterday morning about nine o'clock and by half past one, the whole thing was laid and put in. Now these quarry tiles are very old anyway. They're probably a couple of hundred years old themselves. And as you can see, they give it real character and I love using quarry tiles so I really do like quarry tiles and what I've done is I've both ends I've put these I've put old bricks themselves are quite old and are reclaimed so I put bricks both ends onto a bed of cement that you can see there and that's to make them more solid so they act as stop ends to both sides I started at this end here, put these in first, so I put these in the night before I started so that they had a chance to set and then the quarry tiles wouldn't be in any danger of moving as I put them down. So what I've used is this, and this is a, a gritty sand, a sharp sand as it's known in the trade, and that's what I've used to bed them on. And it's a very good stuff indeed. And what I've done is I've done a five to one mix. So that's five parts of sand <clears throat> to one part of cement and mixed it dry. And it's what we call a screed. So to start with, I laid a screed from the back bricks and I took it to approximately three to four tiles this way and laid it on a bed leveled it with a spirit level and then just simply place them on top used a little rubber mallet to to tamp on top just to make sure they had a good adhesion to the layer underneath and to make sure that they would take now as i said i mixed it dry because you don't want to be working with wet cement a screed is by far the best way to do it and then i carried on all the way down did it in sections now i'm not a builder i'm not a landscaper but i've done this kind of work many many times so it's a pretty easy job to do for anyone really so once you get your first batch of tiles down it becomes easier and easier as you go across and it did for me and i've never done this type of screed laying tiles before i've usually put anything i put down as a path onto cement but I was advised that this would be the better way. So once I'd laid it, we had the biggest thunderstorm approaching that I've seen in a while, and I had to cover the whole thing to make sure that the rain didn't wash away what I'd just done, which had taken me, what, five hours to actually lay these, and I didn't want it washing away. As it transpired, that thunderstorm didn't hit us very, very much, just a tail end of it, really, a bit of a shower. So I removed what I'd covered it with and then left it overnight. And then what I've done today is I've got some of the same sand, some of the same sharp sand, and I've put it on top and left it to dry because it's still a bit damp from the rain last night. So I just put little clumps of it really all the way down there and then spread it around quite thin and left it left it to do its thing, which was dry. I needed it to dry, so the sun was shining quite nice earlier on, and it dried it out pretty quickly. And then I spent at least the next three quarters of an hour 
actually brushing it into these cracks. So as you can see now, it's got them in the cracks. All those, the sand has found its way in there. Now, over time, we are going to have to do a little bit more of this infill because once the rain's come, and the rain has come today as well, we've had a shower this afternoon, so it will wash the sand down into the cracks and consolidate it. So over time, I've got to top that up again, and eventually that will be fine. Now, I decided that I didn't want to take any of the tiles out. I'd said previously that I'd probably take some of the tiles out and put some plants into it, but I looked at it as I was doing it, and I thought, I really like it as it is. And I think you'll agree, it looks pretty good without taking any of the tiles out and without putting any other plants in. Now, what I think may happen over time is things like a Rigiron, so the Erigeron Karvinsky anus will probably find its way over here and I may find little bits and bobs growing in there anyway. And they'll only be very, very small plants because they'll not really be able to get the feet in properly. And by putting the sand in there, that'll allow them to grow a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Should I change my mind, I can just go in and take one or two of those tiles away, break them out dig down to the soil, replace it with a bit of compost or a bit of fresh soil and put some in it. But I don't really want to do that because I like the look of it. Now I've messed around with the entrance as well. So this section's had a bit of a tidy up and I have been waiting until I've got this actual section sorted before I went and redug these borders because they weren't looking right as they never do. And remember, I'm on a, a bit of a hill here, as you can make out, it rises up. As you can see from, hopefully from that film there, you can see it gets higher as it gets towards the steps. So I've had to bear that in mind. So I've had to level this section up and make it flatter. Now, it's not perfect. As I said, I'm not a builder. I'm not a landscaper. I've done this sort of thing before, but I didn't want it to look perfect. So I did use a spirit level to help me because I didn't want it to be totally out but I wanted it to look more rustic and look like it had uh, seen, seen some life. Now, because the quarry tiles are possibly over 200 years old, it saw that anyway, and some of the quarry tiles aren't perfect. Some of them have got edges missing, which I absolutely love, like that section there. That's perfect. And other ones have had to be cut. So let's use this as an example. So we've cut those in half, some of the quarry tiles in half, and left all those, well, it's character in it, it's characterful. So I've left all those little bits like that. I don't want to take those away and put perfect ones. Now, when you walk on this path, it feels pretty solid now. I can walk on that without a problem. And it's solid underfoot, and it brings me down here, and then back to this section here. Now this is probably not likely to stay a grass path. I quite like it at the minute, but I'd rather remove it and use some other form of path. I mean, a, a, probably a quarry tile path coming down here would probably be okay, but not sure. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that for now because I never intended it to come down here. Originally, this was going to be part of the border, and I wasn't going to have this path at all. But we decided that uh, it would probably be a little bit better if we could walk up and down here this way so it's not too far for people to walk when they do visit the garden. And there's a reason for it. So as you can see, it's looking absolutely beautiful. What I did was I managed to find yet another piece of old railway sleeper, just a little chunky bit. I didn't even have to cut that to size. That was just perfect. And I've dropped it below the original bordering ones and done that so that's absolutely perfect and then everything butts up to it so now we just leave it and it looks like it's been there 200 years maybe a bit of exaggeration there now for the keen-eyed amongst you you may have noticed i'd also played about with the cloister pergola and i've added this this section here because i always knew there was something missing and me and Kathy had a discussion. I decided I wanted to put another archway here to introduce you up that section there. And she thought three would look better, which 
I totally agreed with. And I would have probably come to that conclusion myself anyway. Now, immediately, it makes it look absolutely fantastic. And I really do like this new archway. I will be buying plants to climb up it. I'm not sure what just yet. Several options, wisterias, clematis, roses. I don't know, but we will put them on there. The, all that it's missing at the minute are the finials, like on top of the other ones there. And we'll get three of those to go above each one of those posts and that should look really nice so as you can see again that makes it look altogether different so when you're looking at it from this section here it's looking really really nice and it makes sense of why i've put the path in there's a reason for it going in not only to draw your attention down to the polo down at the bottom end there but also to drag you to that little pergola or the add-on pergola so that's like a tunnel effect or will be a tunnel effect once all the plants start growing and that should look really great once the plants do start finding the way up we've got roses already growing up the other side and hopefully we'll be able to introduce those over and make them grow here so I've got some ivy that I'll probably put up there, one called buttercup which is a particular favourite of mine and I think I may introduce that and put it at the base of one of these posts at least so the millstone there don't know what i'm going to do with that at the moment just left it sat there it will find its own position eventually i had intended originally to put it in that section there at the end to bring you onto it but we played about well i played about with several different options and finally settled on just a plain brick at the back just to hold it in its place and then just the quarry tiles sometimes simplicity is the key and i go by a saying called kiss keep it simple stupid and it always works now today i've been over to lincoln i've done the radio show and i've been over to lincoln and they have what they call the steampunk festival and there's a chap there that comes every year and sells this kind of thing this metal work and i saw this one and was just bowled over by it and I assume it's an echinacea of some description. It looks more like an echinacea, although these sections here are not completely true. You would have put more striations in there rather than those. They look more like leaves. But I'm going to say that that is to mimic an echinacea, which I've got below it. The Bressingham hybrids, which look fantastic. So everywhere you look at this path from a distance, it looks really good. It looks really inviting. It looks like it's been there forever. When we're sat on here, we're going to get to admire it from up here as well. And if I sit down, there you go. When I'm sat down, those are the views I get. So tantalising views of a, a beautiful path, really. And then that pergola, that add-on pergola to the left there, you can see where it looks like from up here. It's looking really nice. And imagine that in another, what, three or four years when it's clothed in growth whatever we choose it should look good it wouldn't really matter and we will make that decision as we go on so today's a beautiful day for mulling this over admiring the work the hard work i've put in over the last two days and enjoying what i've built so i hope you like what i've done i know there was a few of you waiting for this you wanted to see what it looks like and there you go that's what it looks like and it's easy to do please don't worry about doing these things they're relatively simple to do you don't have to be 100 percent fit to make these things either and you can save yourself an absolute fortune by building them yourself just take a bit longer put a bit more thought into it and it should be easy for you all comments gratefully received can tell your friends about this channel that'd be great and if you can press the subscribe button and if you hit the little belly button the belly button <laughs> if you <laughs> if you hit the bell button you will get all the latest updates that i put up and i as you know i do them quite regular so hit the belly button <laughs> and it'll notify you every time i upload a new video any questions always happy to answer questions i like to see your comments as i've said in the past i don't need any help in designing any help in choosing plants 
I'm a pretty good gardener from in that respect. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want. But I thank you for all your suggestions that I probably won't use. So there you go. The new path. What shall we call it? What shall we call it? Well, I think that the best, the best name for that is the quarry tile path. Okay, I shall talk to you on the next one. Ta-da! Yeah.